All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something called unit quaternions. Um, as a better or perhaps the best representation of 3 D rotation. <clears throat> so, I will use Q for quaternion it will look like a 4 dimensional vector I will give it 4 very simple coordinates A B C D I'm not going to use X Y Z just to avoid confusion with the ordinary Euclidean space that we are in, but nevertheless you can consider this as an element of R 4. So, there is nothing strange going on with each of the components they are just 4 real numbers 4 real parameters and I am going to impose a constraint they are called unit quaternions which is going to mean that A squared plus B squared plus C squared plus D squared equals 1. Hey, that is not bad that gives us how many degrees of freedom 3. So, that is good. Uh, so, this, I just want to make sure that is a sanity check right just make sure we are always keeping the degrees of freedom right. What is this geometrically what kind of shape is this? It is the equation of a yeah hypersphere or let us just say a sphere a hypersphere that is right. So, it is one dimension higher than the 3 D sphere it is a three dimensional surface right the ordinary sphere is a two dimensional surface that sits in R 3 this is a three dimensional surface that sits in R 4 right. So, you know you do not have to completely visualize that. Um, so, the set of all uh, Q that we are allowed to have here the ones that are unit um, let me even say it I will say unit um, quaternions is a hypersphere. Um, in mathematics it is called S 3 if you are curious. So, yes you can do it in higher dimensions you can have S n in n dimensions. Um, it is 3 because it is a 3 dimensional surface. So, the standard sphere that you know is S 2 and a circle is S 1. I should point out that um, you know I am going to use this A B C D representation and um, in unity 3 D and in game engines they tend to use a different representation which is uh, x y z and w. So, even without being sorted alphabetically correctly and in terms of my representation which I am going to use the one that is consistent with mathematics and most of engineering as well which is um, b c d a. So, if you want to go back and forth between what I am doing in class and what you might see in, in unity and other game engines um, then you have to take the first element and put it at the end. Um, I do not want to tell you how many bugs I had in my code because of this this extra change. So, it is very easy to make mistakes with this. So, so just be very careful um, <coughs> very commonly you will see quaternions especially in math written like this um, instead of writing it as a 4 D vector you will have a plus b i plus c j plus d k perhaps with little hats on these, um, but not necessarily. So, so maybe with or without the hats um, in fact, I am going to take the hats off let me I am sorry. Um, so, very often you will see it written like that if I look at it with just this part a plus b i that reminds you of what? complex numbers right maybe you put a j there if you are an electrical engineer um because somebody used i for current right. So, um and so um very often people say that there is a real part of the quaternion which is the a and then three imaginary parts which are which are uh, i j and k and then this leads to lots of fear and confusion among students right. And so, um when you deal with complex numbers and you have the real and imaginary parts those were invented because people wanted to find roots of polynomials right. The polynomials have real coefficients and if you want to find all their roots you need to invent complex numbers to have a kind of algebraic closure. This does not correspond to the algebraic closure of some kind of polynomials. So, um, there are some reasons for referring to these as imaginary parts because um, algebraically they behave 
similar to complex numbers and, and become a kind of generalization, but they do not correspond to roots of polynomials and we are not going to do things like that. So, in this class I prefer not to make a big deal out of uh, real and imaginary I do not think that is important here. It is important for you to just think of it as 4 parameters it is a 4 D vector and we are going to normalize them so that they are on a sphere. So, I would say avoid this kind of you know let us say fear of something perhaps nightmarish and algebraic that is happening here. If you find these things interesting go and read about it and learn about it it is quite fine I, I find it interesting, but um, we do not need to go down that path. And so, um, it is important here just to keep in mind that there are 4 parameters A B C D and um, if you treat it as a 4 D vector the length is 1. The next thing I want to tell you is how to encode a 3 D rotation using our A B C D parameters. So, here I gave you an example of how to encode rotation using exponential coordinates I just took the theta and multiplied it by the v. I am going to do some other transformation um, or operation to do the encoding as a quaternion. So, I am going to have v and theta and convert it to a quaternion. So, here is the thing again suppose I get um, v equals v 1 v 2 v 3 and I have theta right. So, I have 4 parameters that I am using. So, I want to go between v and theta and I am going to have this representation cosine theta over 2 that is the a part. I am just going to be a 4 D vector here that is the A part the B, the B part is going to be V 1 times sin of theta over 2. So, that is the B V 2 sin theta over 2 that is the C V 3 sin theta over 2 that is the D all right. So, all I did was write cosine theta over 2 here and then for the remaining 3 components I just took the v vector and did a scalar multiplication times sine theta over 2 correct. That is all I did. If I square all of these and add them up what do I get right. So, I get cosine squared theta over 2 and then these 3 well I get a bunch of sine squares to add up, but I know the length is going to be 1 because the v's when I square those and add them up they all add up to 1. So, the entire thing is going to um, when I square all of these is going to add up to be sin squared theta over 2 by the simple trig identity I get 1. So, this is a parameterization that puts points on this unit sphere in 4 dimensional space right. So, what, what I want you to get comfortable with is just being able to move back and forth between these two. So, that when you see this a B C D vector somewhere in the code maybe you are looking at unity or you are reading the code except remember that it is x y z w there. Um, but whenever you whenever you see it you should be able to look at it directly and understand how to extract the angle theta and the axis v. So, it should be very natural for you do not have fear about imaginary parts and other kinds of strange things going on and visualization of 4 dimensional spheres and th four spheres in R 4 and things like that it is a 3 dimensional sphere in R 4. Do not worry about that just worry about um, understanding that there is an axis and an angle that is encoded in here and it is provided by this simple formula. So, if you understand that let us try to go over some simple examples. So, these are some useful examples. useful examples. So, so what does that quaternion do? If I apply this formula what is it what does it correspond to? What is that? Yeah, so, so, this is this should do um, this should be the identity rotation right it should not do anything. Um, if theta equals 0 then all of these components become 0 B C and D and this component becomes 1 correct. So, this one means the identity rotation right. 
it is very interesting that in that case I cannot even tell what the axis was anymore right because they all became 0 does that matter. No, it is the perfect case it did not rotate anyway. So, there is no axis. So, it seems like the, the axis just vanishes exactly in the place where there was no rotation occurring. So, very nice feels good does not it. So, let us see well let us try some other very obvious patterns here. What does that correspond to? So, that is right 180 degree rotation about the x axis right because the axis here for this case must be v equals 1 0 0 right for this case. So, this is pitch am I still being consistent with my definitions pitch is rotation about x correct ok. So, pitch by pi right 180 degrees well if you know that case. should be able to fill in these this one is yaw by pi right because it is rotation about the y axis. See how you can look at the last three components and and if it is simple enough you know the axis of rotation. In fact, this is just the axis of rotation, but not correctly normalized right. If you just take the last three components and renormalize them you will get the axis. You cannot renormalize it in this case but that is ok because there is no rotation anyway. So, the axis does not matter, but the other cases if you test for being non 0 then you can figure out the axis very easily with your eyes not even writing code. All right, um, the last one is roll by pi All right. So, these are very simple examples. So, there really should not be fear of quaternions I see a lot of fear of quaternions these this is quite simple once you understand what to look for. Um, the first coordinate is the amount of rotation which is inverted right the smaller the number the bigger the rotation and then the last three uh, coordinates are giving information about the axis of rotation. Uh, Let us try another one uh, 1 over square root 2 1 over square root 2 0 0. So, suppose I see that what is the axis of rotation? So, again that is a perfect case where now I have to renormalize it, but it looks like it is about the x axis how far have I rotated. Yeah, very good. So, that is good. So, you are doing you are doing great here. So, um, 45 or 90? 90. 90 because in the formula here we divide by 2. So, that is how some of you got fooled right. So, I make the mistake a lot myself. So, it is no problem. Um, so, pitch by pi over 2. So, I should be able to very quickly go with the other cases 1 over square root 2 0 1 over square root 2 0 1 over square root 2 0 0 1 over square root 2. So, this is very nice if you are debugging your code you just want to make some simple transformations and try them out it is very nice to be able to just immediately specify some simple transformations like this. Or if you are debugging and you are not sure you got the code correct. So, it is just very nice to be able to to, to read these quickly. Um, so, this one is yaw by pi over 2 and roll by pi over 2. Questions about that? I'm going to give a little more information as we as we go along here, but I just want to make sure that's clear, right? So, no questions. It's either means it's very clear or very confusing. Right? So, I don't know. Hmm. So here's something else to think about: inverses. And multiple representations. In other words, non-uniqueness. Multiple. multiple representations. So, if I have if I have a quaternion a b c d now unit quaternion that is being used to represent a rotation
I should probably write back the um the conversion formula. Let me remind you of this cosine theta over 2 v 1 sine theta over 2 v 2 sine theta over 2 v 3 sine theta over 2. All right, so remember that right that is how we got the a b c d components. So, what if I have minus a minus b minus c minus d can anyone tell me how the two of these are related. So, if a b c d corresponds to some 3 d rotation what is minus a minus b minus c minus d going to correspond to is that the inverse rotation it is the same rotation is not that amazing it is the same rotation because if I take the v and I twist it in the opposite direction right I just flip it around I will negate the b c d components and then if I negate the the theta as well um that will negate the a, but it will not force another negation here. So, that will negate all four components. So, that means that these two are equivalent. So, that is something very interesting to pay attention to. So, that means that when we travel on this sphere right it is a three dimensional sphere in four dimensions if we go to the opposite side of it right it is called the antipodal point right the opposite point what anybody know where the opposite point on the earth is from here uh, maybe it is a good guess I do not know no it has to be in the southern hemisphere right. So, you have to change hemispheres in all cases right. So, anyway you go to the opposite point on the earth and um that corresponds to the antipodal point. So, on this quaternion sphere this unit sphere of quaternions unit hypersphere of quaternions um the opposite point is always equivalent is not that interesting. So, just to add an extra layer of confusion all right let us think about what this one does what if I have a, but I decide to negate the b c and d parts. So, I keep a the same, but I negate these three what does that correspond to yeah I decided not to now yeah um if I take what do I get if I do cosine minus theta it, it negates right or it stays the same oh he should stay the same okay okay I see. So, if I move the axis backwards let us see <coughs> ah so these should stay the same right. So, let me let me think about this if I let us go back here let us go say I have v I do rotation by theta I want to now do minus v and the question is let us see I want to make this correspond to the exact same rotation if I am going in the opposite direction I think still yep since it is the angle is changing from the other side. Yeah, that's right. It's it's a very it's a difficult problem of orientation here. You have to visualize it. We have to remain going counterclockwise, right? So if I want to continue going counterclockwise and apply the exact same rotation, is it going to be theta or minus theta? What's that? Two pi minus theta. Thank you. So it's two pi minus theta. So we go in the opposite direction. It's two pi minus theta. All right. So if I go two pi minus theta, what sign do I get over here? negative a all right good. So, let us keep the we keep the trig going ok Whew. all right. So, we are fine now what if I decided to do it this way instead and I did not negate the a how are these two related. So, if I say by Euler's 3 d representation theorem that every rotation corresponds to a single rotation about some axis then if I want to undo that rotation I just twist it back the other way right. So, that corresponds to the inverse does that make sense. So, if I have some axis v and I rotate it by some amount theta if I now rotate by minus theta it will just undo that rotation. 
So, in this case this should change the sign and I leave I yeah this should change the sign. So, I um end up getting the opposite right. So, if I keep the axis the same, but I just negate the theta then I will negate these three components, but the a will end up being the same. So, here if I relate these two it is inverses is that fine. So, if you are looking at a quaternion a b c d and you want to figure out what its inverse is what do you do just negate the last three components is not that interesting it is that easy to compute the inverse rotation. If you want to do it with a matrix what do you do do you have to compute a full matrix inverse maybe except if it is a rotation matrix it is just a transpose turns out. So, it is easier it is also reasonably easy in that case um if this is the case here then we also can um have another case where I just negate the first coordinate I negate a and I leave b c and d alone and these two should be equivalent right does that make sense it is the same same rule as up here if I negate all four components I should end up with these being equivalent and these two being inverses does that seem all right. So, again just to simp just to, to summarize if I negate all four components it is the same rotation. If I decide to negate only the first component or I decide to negate the second third and fourth components together but not the first one either one of those corresponds to an inverse is not that nice. So, so that is one very quick way many times in 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 programming in these kinds of systems it is easy to make a mistake where you should have the inverse rotation and you have instead calculated the forward rotation. In that case you just perform some simple sign changes you should of course go back and, and check all of your math carefully and make sure you understand what you are trying to do. But um for debugging purposes it is very helpful to know you can very quickly spot that you are off by an inverse if the signs are wrong. So, that is why I am telling you this trying to give you this extra information all right any questions about that. <clears throat> there is a direct formula for multiplication of quaternions that do not that does not require you to convert back to rotation matrices um I am not going to make um a, a big deal out of it, but I at least want to quickly give it to you. So, just so you know uh, multiplication uh, multiplication all right multiplication. <clears throat> so, let us um suppose that again we have um a b c d for our quaternions and I will say let p equal just a b c d part. So, I can treat it as a 3 d vector let us just suppose that is a 3 d vector called p and now if I want to calculate um some quaternion q 1 multiplied by some quaternion q 2 to get some third quaternion q 3 there is a very simple formula just using um 3 d standard vector calculus um I say q 1 multiplied by q 2 is equal to a 1 a 2 that is the scalar th part um the, the the first components of each one minus p 1 dot product p 2. So, that gives me the first component now this is actually a 3 that we are calculating and then the remaining three components are given by p 1 standard cross product p 2 plus um scalar a 1 multiplied by p 2 plus scalar a 2 multiplied by vector p 1. So, this gives me the uh b 3 c 3 and d 3 components I am not deriving this at all there is a whole algebra of quaternions there is a reason for it coming out this way. But what I want to say that is very interesting about it couple of things one of them is that um if you go through this you will find out that it is not commutative this product is that a good thing. 
a good thing because if you are using this to represent 3 D rotations and 3 D rotations are not commutative it would make sense that this algebra of multiplying quaternions also ends up being non commutative as does matrix multiplication of um, rotations encoded that way. Um, the reason why I put this and, and you, usually you will find this inside of a quaternion library you know that you do not have to really worry about the details of it, but one of the reasons why I put this is so that you know that you can do the following you could have rotation matrices R 1 and R 2 um, and you might want to multiply them to get some third matrix R 3. The thing you could do is you could represent the first rotation as a quaternion Q 1, you can represent the second rotation as a quaternion Q 2 and if you do this and you apply this product that I have given here and you get a result Q 3, the interesting thing is that these two results here end up being the same if I go and convert back. So, the arrows here correspond to the standard conversion formula to convert rotations. So, if I go and I convert from rotation matrix to quaternion another rotation matrix to quaternion I do the quaternion multiplication and then I convert that back to a rotation matrix I will get the same result and you will actually get it with fewer algebraic operations. So, people tend to prefer to just stay in quaternion land the whole time let us say right. So, you do not ever have to convert back to matrices if you do not want to. If you are using a library that forces you to in your code then so be it, but I just wanted to point out that because of this nice algebra you can stay entirely um, inside of quaternion representation. So, it is another reason why people like using them in computer graphics and in virtual reality. In addition to this property that, that I mentioned, but I did not prove formally in any way which is that small changes in your um, in your quaternion parameters correspond to the same small changes in rotation of the rigid body regardless of where that rotation is occurring at in the space of rotations and that that is very important. Another way to say it is that um, if I were to pick a an orientation uniformly at random what would that mean? If it is a 2 D orientation you just pick a number between 0 and 2 pi at random and you would be fine. What would I pick at random for 3 D rotation? If you pick Euler angles you all pitch and roll at random you will not end up with a uniform covering of orientations. If you pick a unit quaternion at random a, a random point on the sphere you will in fact have perfect uniform coverage. So, so if you do probabilities over uh, transformations as well it is very important to have this. Um, if you are interested in a lot further detail on this subject it is called Haar measure. If you want to study the mathematics of these things. <coughs>